Did you know Italy used to have skyscrapers? Because I did not know that at all. What happened to them? Right? That's the question. So we have the video right here by the channel called The Present Past. And it's called What Happened to Italy's Skyscrapers. Links down below for the original video. So you can go over there and uh, hit like and all that good stuff. And we're going to jump into it and we're going to find out what happened to Italy's skyscrapers. Maybe you've seen this picture before. I know I have. It's posted all over the internet. This old town with an insane amount of towers. Many around 100 meters tall. Twice the size of the Tower of Pisa. And it's not just this image. Wow. Cultural influencers love this town. And I get it. This medieval skyline seems out of place. It looks more like modern New York. It is impressive. It is futuristic. It seems almost unbelievable. Huh. There are 179 towers in this image. And it's supposed to be of a real place. The Italian city of Bologna. But nowadays, you'll find just a handful of towers there. Online, no one seems to agree on how many towers there used to be. This got my historian senses tingling. Are these images actually real? I wanted to find out one thing. What happened to these towers? To answer that question, I knew I had to go there. Yeah, nice. So I feel like if they did have these towers, then the, the, you know, because it would make sense that there's a few remnants left. You know, those are those are built a long time ago if they were real. And they're not going to be built to today's standard, of course, uh, as far as that goes. They're, you know, so it's, it's going to be natural that they fall down, a lot of them, right? And then you got random ones that are still standing. And maybe because they're falling down, they, they just stopped building them like that. You know, they're like, eh, this just isn't going to work. So then they just never did, you know. So then nowadays you don't have that anymore. That was what, like 1269, that one picture shows. So, yeah, I mean, you're talking 800 years ago. I'm on my way to Bologna. I'm meeting Lorenzo Caravaggi, a lecturer in medieval history from Lancaster University in the UK, who might be the Italian with the most impressive English accent alive. Indeed. It's going to take some time to get there. But I hope I will get some rest with the help of today's sponsor, Mantis Sleep. Um, I've been using Mantis Sleep the past. That looks nice. Wow. Jochem. Hey, you Jochem. Can... Okay, wait. Uh, let's see. Uh, VPN. You can see how thick those bad boys are. Okay, so I am going to... Is this all? I'm just going to watch it because I don't know. Maybe he has it incorporated into his video. We're just going to watch it, but... That looks really thick. Maybe I'm gonna get me some of those. I don't know, that looks nice. And no website, no. Ah, Manta Sleep. Manta Sleep makes the world's best sleep mask and accessories. All Manta's masks completely block out any light and are highly adjustable. They have big cups, so there's no pressure at all on your eyelids. Jochen is wearing the Manta Sleep Pro. This mask has C-shaped cups, which is perfect for sight sleepers like Jochen. I just spent the night nice. sleeping on the floor of this Greek ferry, which generally I would not recommend. But with the mantis sleep mask and some earplugs, it was actually fine. I got way more sleep than I was expecting. The mask fit, I didn't really feel it when I was sleeping, and they kept the lights on the entire trip. So it was nice to have a mask that completely blocked that out. Nice. So if you also want to use mantis sleep, you can use my code PRESENTPAST for a 10% discount at the link below. And we can go back to Bologna. Let's start with reading up on the history of Bologna's towers. Many were built 800 years ago. You might know Italy as this unified country. Italy at the time was different. It was a mess of small states. In this, I mean, to be fair, all of Europe was like that, though. You know, nothing's the same as it was. It was all over Europe, just massive amounts of just small little pockets of of little little kingdoms right little little areas i mean i'm not i might not be using the right terminology but you get what i'm saying i'm sure this area they think cities should not be ruled by popes or emperors but ruled by its citizens independent city states like venice florence and bologna become the hubs of trade and culture venice by some estimates nice. bologna becomes one of the largest cities in europe 
Okay. It's a time of huge ambitious projects. Cities built cathedrals, town halls and public squares. And some people built towers. In oh, Bologna, yeah. I found... <laughs> that was the same tower from the animation. That, that was just really cool. ...towers in different shapes and sizes. Some are big, others are crooked. This one is actually a bed and breakfast. You can sleep here. But of potentially hundreds, now there are just 22 left. These two are the most famous. The Asinelli Tower is the largest. It's almost 100 meters tall. But as I walked through the city, I found something strange. Some towers are just a few stories tall. Nothing like this image. Right. So, what's going on? In order to understand what's going on with all these towers, we actually need to leave the city and go to the countryside. But before we do that, okay. we need to do something really, really important. We need to have breakfast. Andiamo? Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Italian breakfast. Let's see it. Love, love some food, guys. What are, what are they eating in Italy breakfast time? Oh. This is a croissant, yes. It's a cornetto. It's a specialty they make here. Um, okay. Lemon cream. Great way to start the day. It's <laughs> the hearty breakfast we all make. So there's a lemon cream in it. So it's sort of like a, almost like a pastry donut sort of thing. So a croissant. Croissants are great. I wonder if they're different than the ones I've had. I've had different, you know, different styles, different variations of croissants. Indeed. Indeed. Before people built towers, they built castles. Now, we know Italy is a world of cities. It is the most heavily urbanized area in Europe at this time. Really? But Italy, like the rest of Europe, is also made of aristocracy. And the aristocracy, they build castles and they live according to the lives of knighthood and chivalry, which often translates into using violence and uh, showing that you're good at fighting. Noble families would often be fighting each other. When they moved to Bologna, their traditions are taken over by local elites, but the city is no place to build castles. These noble family feuds are really like Romeo and Juliet. And we have a story of uh, a young woman and a young man from rival families that fell in love with each other, had a secret wedding, and their relatives got quite mad, the relatives of the young woman especially. And they stormed the houses of their enemies, killed the young man, and then strangled uh, the young woman who Jeez. had uh, married their enemy. With this kind of violence happening, nobles built towers for protection. Families actually don't live in them. They live in townhouses. Towers are more like panic rooms. They're only used when they're needed. But these times are not only defined by violence. This image shows two families making peace. Families also want political stability. And priests tell them that if they want to go to heaven, they have to stop fighting. People start describing towers. Pictures of them start to appear. But they all look different from this image. Uh. So where is it actually from? If you do a reverse image search, you land up on Wikipedia, where it says it's made by this artist Tony Pecoraro. I found his book with beautiful artwork of these magical cityscapes and of Bologna. But this there book is. is from 2008. So I sent the artist an email, and I got a reply. It's all based on documents historic. The aspect of the end is but the of perspective artistic perspective. For communicative reasons, the height of the towers is slightly aumented. So this is an artist interpretation. Okay. It's exaggerated. The real height should be lower. He based himself on a real source, this Angelo Finelli. I've heard that name before. Connected to this image. This already looks a lot older. I found it here on eBay. These are postcards of Bologna. Okay. Postcards from the early 20th century. Yep. So, not from medieval times. They are also based on the work of Angelo Finelli. Who is this guy? Oh. Uh. Angelo Finelli. Who are you? We're going to find out. Is this all a hoax? Was there not? Is that what we're going to find out, guys? Are we going to find out that there was not actually a bunch of skyscrapers there and this is just all a huge exaggeration? Here he is, with a map of the city behind him. And this is the model of Bologna in front of him, with a lot of towers. Yeah. It's in a communal art museum. If this model is the basis for the pictures, I have to go and see it. And hopefully, yeah. I can find out how many towers there really were. 
But what's that? Is it is it a real like like how do they know what it looked like back then? If if that's what did the model? What was the model based on? I guess is what I'm getting at. Because if the model wasn't based on any facts and they just made the model, and then everything else and the pictures and all that is based on the model that was made, that looked like a picture from the late 1800s, early uh, 1900s of the man in front of the model. So, on what basis is this historical when it? is just something from a hundred years ago, right? Like it has to go deeper than that. They had to have got their info from somewhere else. I guess we're going to find out about this model. So let's do it. The glory of men was to be rich in arms and horses. That of nobles was to have lofty towers. As towers become popular, they move into the mainstream. You have merchants, okay. you have bankers, you have people who come into a lot of money who also want to start building towers. Towers become status symbols. Families are competing to build the tallest not always because of defensive purposes. Imagine having to carry stones for a catapult all the way up a 100 meters tower. And it's not just Bologna. In Italy, it seems like everyone is building towers. In Siena, Florence, Pisa, San Gimignano, towers become part of cityscapes. And Bologna's story will inspire a simple shoemaker. So it's easier to defend because it's taller so you can go all the way to the top and the people stuck at the bottom and can't get up to you i guess is the theory makes sense i found that museum that has the work of angelo finelli this is him he's described as a shoemaker by trade but also a strange self-taught artist scientist he made this model of bologna this is the model i've seen posted online it's actually a hundred years old this amazing work shows all these towers dominating the city. It's responsible for all the pictures on the internet. But in the museum, they told me it's not the original source for Bologna's towers. Yeah, it can't be. Because why would he just invent this? He had to have got his information from somewhere else. That's what I was saying earlier. So what does that source tell us? And where did all these towers go? And is this just an exaggeration too? And, and because it's, you know, so he, he, maybe he, just speculation, of course, possibly, you know, he's, he heard about the towers and some writings or whatever, right? Made this model, exaggerated it a bit. And then of course people see this model. And then of course they exaggerate even more into what the, uh, the story is today. I don't know. Considering as we have the ancient disease of pride, which has daily caused innumerable homicides, we have agreed that no other house should be built higher than the tower of Stephen, son of Balduinus and Lambert. Considering we have the ancient disease of pride, which has daily caused innumerable homicides. Okay, so... People, so it sounds like, okay, and that's in, in, in the year 1090, Bishop's Order on the Height of Towers in Pisa, which isn't Bologna. Is Pisa in? Maybe it's a district in Bologna. I don't know. Honestly, I, I apologize, guys. I don't know much about Italy. But uh, so it sounds like people, it's becoming dangerous because they're just going higher and higher and higher and higher. And probably this person, tire, the Tower of Stephen, son of Balgenius and Lambert, I would assume probably just happened to have the tallest tower at the time or the tallest one that they deemed safe. Right? So they're like, no more, no more going above this level. Some nobles say the length of towers matters. Others say it's what you do with it. <laughs> but old towers become associated with noble violence and public disorder. City governments decide to act. We have an image from a manuscript from Genova that shows the civic governor uh, of the city ordering the destruction of the tower of a nobleman who committed murder. It's absolutely forbidden to build on top of a destroyed tower. So they will okay. leave the ruins as a That's perpetual a memory of, of your shame, like your family will be shamed. But it okay, but then for how long? Because this, these cities are not full of ruins. Okay, you got all these supposed towers gone, but it's not like there's piles of ruins everywhere in the city. So somewhere along the way, they've cleaned up the ruins and rebuilt obviously but for a, obviously quite some time the ruins are i guess on just public display for a shame thing it sounds like medieval justice guys 
it wasn't just a demolishing of towers that ended them. So the wealthy get bored of building towers at some point. In the 14th century, it's not as fashionable as it used to be 100, 200 years before. So instead, they're building palaces where they can hold banquets and feasts. For the rest, towers were demolished, other collapsed in earthquakes, and some were shortened. The idea of a Bologna dominated by towers faded from memory. Okay. Until one man made it his mission to remember. I found the original source that inspires the model, which inspires the postcards that inspires an Italian artist almost 150 years later. Count Giovanni Gozzadini is descended from one of the tower-owning noble families. He wrote this, the first account of the history of Bologna's towers. It's actually a really solid historical work, but he identifies 194 towers. Okay. 194. Recent research shows he might have accidentally counted some towers twice. It's not just a mistake, though. Count Gozzadini is a proud man. There is a sense of, in a way, boasting about the power and the wealth and the beauty of Bologna. But he also sees them as warning signs for a modern Italy. Uh, because they're associated with violence, with infighting. So in the wake of the Italian unification in the 19th century, towers should also stand as warning signs not to have divisions again in the future. So how did Bologna actually Morning, look in the 1200s? So. At the museum, they told me there's actually a second model that can show us this. A second model? Okay. You can clearly see the outer walls, with roads leading to the center, leading up to towers towering over the city. But nothing like... I, I, like what I was saying, so so it gets exaggerated along the way. Is this more of a proper representation? It seems like it probably is. How many exactly? We will probably never know. Modern sources say 80 to 100 towers. I know this doesn't look as impressive as those other pictures, but imagine for someone coming to the city and seeing all those towers. Back then? Yeah. It must have been a breathtaking sight. Yeah. One of the things that's not so nice when you make videos online is you never have a live audience to share them with. This is exactly why me and some creative friends have rented a cinema. Okay, These so that's that. Uh, check out his uh, cinema, whatever this thing is that he's talking about. I don't know. Links to the original videos in the description section down below. So then you can jump on over there and check out all his links if that's what you're into. But uh, let me know about these towers. Do you live in Bologna? Do you know anything about it? Are you a historian by any chance? That'd be pretty sweet if there's some actual historians or archaeologists that watch my channel. That, that would be pretty sweet if there's some archaeologists in the room or something, right? Some real historians, somebody that works in a museum. That'd be pretty sweet. Let us know. Uh, not just for me, for all of us. It's, it's just good conversation. We, we, we all love looking through the comments, I'm sure. I look through them. I don't respond to them all. There's a lot coming in. But I do, uh, I do try to read over them all. So you guys have a super fun, awesome day. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye.